as a part of installation and configuration of Microsoft Dynamics AX prerequisite. I have the media to install uh, uh, SharePoint 2010 right here. Uh, it's always a good idea to run the splash uh, before you start installation of uh, uh, SharePoint 2010 because uh, there are prerequisites uh, that that's needed in order to uh, install SharePoint 2010. So it'll give you a nice little interface uh, to install and give you a chance to install all the prerequisite before you run into any issue um, running the setup directly. You can also, uh, you have a choice to run prerequisite installer directly. Uh, it'll give you the same interface, but it'll, um, um, Splasher will give you a um, chance to uh, install the prerequisite and once that's done, then you can go ahead and run the installation from right there. So I'm going to go ahead and double click on Splash. As you can see that it gave you a, a nice little interface. Um, it's, it, right here it's, it says that install the software prerequisites um, and uh, install SharePoint server. So we're going to go ahead and install software prerequisites. Click yes. And these are the components that it's going to install as a prerequisite of SharePoint 2010. So we're going to click Next. We're going to let it take care of itself. Accept license. Next. These uh, prerequisites are going to take a little bit of time. So I'm going to go ahead and pause the video once the prerequisites are installed successfully. I'll be back completed and this is the summary that uh, uh, it has uh, installed it has downloaded and installed successfully so we're gonna go we're, we're gonna go ahead and uh, uh, click finish and we're ready to install SharePoint server so click finish and we're gonna go ahead and click on SharePoint server click yes Here's the product key if you have a enterprise or standard whatever the product key you need to uh, provide that here and then it'll be able to move further. After putting the product key click continue. Up here uh, there is a couple options standalone and server farm based. Uh, if you are going to install uh, SharePoint uh, 2010 for uh, proof of concept uh, or for a little while then you can uh, click on standalone uh, installation uh, if you're um, going to install uh, SharePoint 2010 for uh, dev test or UAT or even production then you uh, it's a best idea to click on uh, server farm base so I'm going to go ahead and server uh, click on um, a server farm based uh, installation um, this server-based installation, even after you click on that, it'll ask you with whether you wanted to install the complete installation or standalone. In this view, the complete installation, it'll com uh, install all the components um, in uh, uh, SharePoint Farm Server. And if you click on in standalone, it'll install some components of uh, uh, a farm, uh, SharePoint farm-based installation so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna uh, click on complete installation and here is the here are the file locations uh, if you have a different file location for the installation then you can provide that here you can change it right now but I'm going to keep it that way uh, complete install so click on install now this installation is going to take a, a little bit so I'm going to go ahead and pause the video and as soon as the installation is completed I'll be right back alright uh, the installation is completed successfully and now we're uh, uh, on part where we need to do some configuration um, it's um, the the wizard is asking us that if uh, we wanted to run the SharePoint product configuration wizard now if you're installing the SharePoint first time uh, SharePoint 2010 uh, it's a good idea to let it uh, guide you and run the wizard 
so I'm going to go ahead and leave that um, check bar up here and close this all right we're, we're gonna go ahead and uh, uh, this will lead us in configuration of our database server um, and uh, uh, account so we're gonna go ahead and click next this is telling me that it's going to start uh, restart and stop and start services of uh, some of these so I'm okay with that click yes Now it says that uh, uh, connect to an existing uh, server farm uh, if there would be an, uh, uh, th this installation is brand new so we're going to create a new server farm uh, but if there would be another um, uh, server farm uh, already installed we could have gone uh, and connect to that server. So we're going to go ahead right now is create a new server farm. So click on that and click next here it's asking that uh, what database server that you wanted to uh, connect to so I'm going to go ahead and click on node give my database server And up here is asking that uh, username and password uh, keep in mind that this username and uh, this username has to have a permission to create the database on the server on the SQL server so I'm going to go ahead and give the domain and username go ahead and click next this is the passphrase uh, this if you are installing um, another um, uh, instance of uh, SharePoint 2010 and you wanted to uh, connect to an existing uh, server farm this is the passphrase that you would need and any other application that's more that wanted to connect to uh, this SharePoint instance that you they, it, it would ask you to uh, put the passphrase so make sure that you put the passphrase um, uh, and and save it in the in a, in a save location and or you should remember that so I'm gonna go ahead and put the passphrase and click next the port uh, you can specify the port that you would like to or you can accept the port that uh, it's uh, showing you I'm going to go ahead and put port 540-45 keep in mind that if you put a different port or even accept the existing port um, firewall setting uh, if you wanted to uh, open firewall ports you need to remember this port you need to open this port in firewall setting and uh, authentication uh, I'm going to keep it uh, in NTLM uh, you can later on choose the Kerberos um, uh, authentication as well uh, you can change it later on so I'm gonna go ahead and click next so here is the uh, complete SharePoint product configuration uh, right here uh, this is our database server uh, this is our configuration database name SharePoint underscore config and uh, my central admin URL this is going to be our URL uh, this is the local host name plus the port and authentication provider as we chose NTLM so we're gonna go ahead and uh, click next this is going to install uh, 10 configuration tasks this is going to configure 10 um, configuration tasks once it's completed I'll be right back I'm going to go ahead and pause the video server is 
this is the same information that we got before we started installation so this is uh, telling us that our configuration is successful so what we're gonna do right now is just click on finish and this will bring us the page of uh, central administration and privilege on that uh, this is the cluster admin user name that I used um, during the configuration so I'm going to go ahead and give that uh, username and password I'm going to click on remember my credentials click OK this should open central administration for us experience we're gonna go ahead and click no click OK so a couple options here um, if uh, you're installing uh, SharePoint 2010 first time then it'll be good idea to let it uh, walk you through the steps um, if you have done a couple times then you can choose uh, uh, that no I'll configure everything myself so I'm gonna go ahead and click on start wizard so that will help us or guide us to walk through every configuration that we need to do so click on start wizard here is asking me that uh, if I have a different username uh, if you have a different username and password you can use that here but I'm gonna go ahead and use existing managed account this is the account that has all the privilege uh, privileges to uh, be a service account so that's why I'm using cluster admin um, but uh, uh, if you have a service account different service account that you would like to use but keep in mind that that service account needs needs to have a certain uh, uh, permissions in order to perform all these tasks so make sure that uh, that service account is actually um, uh, admin on the machine and some other things you can go ahead and read the service account uh, prerequisites um, on Microsoft website <clears throat> so I'm gonna go ahead and choose the cluster admin so these are the services that uh, um, it would install for me um, you can pick and choose from the services uh, right now or you can click on next and it will go ahead and install everything but I'm gonna go ahead and go through all the um, services and see what I need I do need business data connectivity services because that's a requirement of um, uh, Microsoft Dynamics AX Excel services application is good AX, uh, we don't want Lotus Notes um, uh, connector so that's that's good everything else seems to be um, you know what we need so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, accept the default which is every service but Lotus Notes connector so we're gonna go we're, we're gonna go ahead and click next this is going to take a while um, so I'm gonna go ahead and pause the video once it's completed I'll be back Election. so what we're gonna go ahead and do um, as far as uh, Microsoft Dynamics AX concerns everything is completed all the prerequisites are completed so I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and create a, a team website anyway uh, just for the demo purposes so I'm gonna go ahead and say tech brothers team and description whatever you wanted to do first team website and we're gonna here are some uh, templates if you wanted to uh, uh, select a particular template regarding to meeting enterprise publishing or custom but I'm gonna go ahead and uh, select as a collaborative so I'm gonna select team site so browse from my active directory so I'm gonna go ahead and choose uh, cluster admin this is my domain so here's the cluster admin user so we're gonna go ahead and click OK 
so uh, you don't need to provide a secondary site collection administrator uh, but if it it would ask I'll go ahead and provide that it's going to take uh, uh, just a minute All right, here is uh, our uh, first site collection, and this is the URL. So we're going to go ahead and copy the URL so that we can paste it uh, in a separate window and uh, confirm that. So we're going to go ahead and um, paste it right here and see how our um, provide the credential. How our first site collection looks like all right this is our first site collection this is uh, your website uh, the first website that uh, how it looks like you can go ahead and customize uh, your uh, website according to your needs so that's it for uh, uh, ins installation of uh, SharePoint 2010 and uh, uh, it it's from the scratch uh, from um, uh, installation of uh, SharePoint 2010 uh, to uh, creating your first site collection. Uh, I hope this helps.